Hey folks, this is Tim with the Wall Racing Channel here, coming at you with a little bit new style video this time. I uh, just got some interesting stuff going on out here in the shed, so I figure I'll do a little shop talk kind of video for you. Uh, picked up a couple bumpers, uh, well, one of them I've had a little while, and then I uh, picked one up last week. Uh, we refer, refer to them as a Chrysler Pointy here in the Demolition Derby world, but let me flip the old camera around here and show you what we're working with. All right, so here we go. So these would be the uh, Chrysler Pointy Bumpers, as we call them, uh, referred to that way in the derby world because, well, they come up to the sharp point that we have here up at the top. Uh, from back to front, they measure about 13 inches all the way to the top of it from the uh, backside of the backing. And uh, picked up the No Vent one last week, so that's new to my collection. Found one uh, for a pretty good deal on the classified, so decided to pick that up. Uh, either I'll run it myself, uh, maybe even make a video on how to load one of these things, or uh, end up selling it to another driver. We'll see uh, what way it goes. But uh, what you'd find these on originally, the no vent style over to the right here, you'd find those on 1974-75 uh, Imperials, so Imperial LeBarons, back when they're still their own brand. After 75, I don't think they were anymore. That's when they became part of Chrysler again, and just using Imperial as a model. But 75 and earlier, think of Imperial similar to how Lincoln is to Ford, that they're like the luxury brand of the larger corporation. But anyway, these are kind of the obvious differences that you'd see on the front of the car here. That they're pretty much the same shape on the skin, except for obviously they didn't have the extra radiator vents that came on the Chrysler New Yorkers later. So that's where you'd get like the vented style where you see this, the extra cooling for the big block engines that were pretty common in those. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure if I've even seen one that didn't have a 440 in it. I think the 400 was another option that they had, but generally all those cars are big blocks. They must have figured out that uh, you needed the extra radiator cooling on those. So by 76 to 78, they switched to this style, but it was pretty much the same exact car as the Imperial LeBaron, the uh, C-body Mopars there. And uh, they made those up until 1978, of course, during the... Uh, oil crisis, fuel crisis, obviously big blocks don't get great fuel economy, so that didn't work out so hot. And uh, those are kind of the outside differences where uh, you actually start to see a difference in these is in the reinforcement on the backside. Uh, let me give this a pause to flip these and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, caught my breath from hefting these things around. Uh, if you haven't messed with one of these before, they have to weigh somewhere right around 200 pounds a piece. They are... Uh, not light in the least to heft these things around. And uh, if I didn't mention it before, these are the strongest car bumpers ever built from the factory. If uh, you haven't ran one before, uh, you you definitely uh, would be surprised when you put one on your car. If it's uh, not something that's reinforced pretty well, the bumper's probably going to outlast the car in most cases. But taking a look at the back side of these, uh, there are some pretty obvious things they see from the start. So this would be the no vent one right here. So starting with the reinforcement that they have on these things. So the Imperial one, this is a big piece of like two and a half by two and a half angle steel that's on that. Welded from one side where the bumper pad is to the other side. And then this one for the New Yorker one, it's really just kind of looks like a piece of flat stock. And then they rolled the edge on the back and they have that that goes from bumper shock location to the other side. But the biggest difference I found that I didn't know about on here, so you can see the reinforcement. This, look, this looks very similar to like a 74 Impala style, but it's the rolled backing top and bottom kind of a narrow beam there that goes throughout front to back and it has all this void space in the bottom but when they switched over to the New Yorker in 76 with the vented bumpers they have this huge piece of c-channel that's on the back there too and that's I'd say about 3 16 steel it's pretty darn thick on there and it's pretty much the same reinforcement I don't know if you can really see inside there but it still has that curvature that it's the same thing as this, 
but has this big gusset on the back that goes all the way along the bottom as well. And that's all factory stuff there, folks. So that's not even, you know, something that a derby person had to figure out and add in there, and let alone even in the corners behind like where the bumper shocks mount. There are all these extra plates and brackets and things. So it's just a uh, part of what makes these things tough and why they're, why they're kind of worth it in the derby world. But uh, for what folks will pay for these these days, eh, I don't know if I would pay that, but you know, good enough for what we do and uh, get out and have some fun with them. And uh, well, I guess if you have any comments or questions about these things or anything that you found interesting with the uh, Chrysler bumpers, feel free to add them in the comments below and be sure to uh, like and subscribe here for any future Derby videos. Later, folks.